welcome back to the perfect pursuit. I am here today with my husband. Ooh. <laughs> oh, Keith. <laughs> with my husband Keith, and we're starting a segment called Cooking with Office. So we are actually making our Thanksgiving dinner. We're not doing a traditional meal. It's just us two, so we're gonna just make some dishes that we really like. One of them being video tacos. We're gonna do rice and beans, and I'm gonna do like a rotel dip for us to eat on while we're cooking, because it takes a little bit. I am using an Instant Pot, so that's super cool. So I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Babe, but we're forgetting something. What we forget? <laughs> that was so corny. <laughs> Anywho, I hope y'all enjoy cooking with us. Welcome to my video. We both are super hungry. Like I said, media tacos is a huge process. It takes a lot of work, a lot of time. Totally worth it though. Um, so I'm gonna make that, and then my husband's gonna actually make us a drink first. Yes, mojitos. That is my specialty. It's the only drink I really know how to make. So it is. Alright, guys. Be so I'm about to go ahead and make the rotel dip. Like I said, super easy dish, classic hood dish. All you need is some tortilla chips. So I just have here some ground beef, rotel. I don't know why, but this is the name of the dip, but this ain't what the dip is. And then Velveeta, I got the queso blend. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna just go ahead and chop this up. So as you guys can see, the Velveeta's in the pot and it's already melting. And I only have it on like low to medium, you guys. So you'll see how easy it's, it's melting like butter almost. While that is happening, I'm gonna go ahead and brown my beef. And like I said, I may do just like a little salt and pepper. That's it. I don't add any oil to the pan for the beef. What? Because it produces its own fat, you guys, so it doesn't even do so that to the meat, you guys. Again, the meat is almost like all the way browned already. You see some little red pieces in there. Yes, meat too. You do not want that. So you're gonna cook it until you don't see the red no more. We like our stuff spicy, so. I think you do is you add your can of rotel, literally directly as it is. Don't strain it, don't drain it, just add it straight into there. Here is our rotel dip, you guys. It's hot, so I'm not about to like bite it on camera and be. So I'm gonna blow it. And I'm gonna taste it, but look how good it looks. I added like more crushed red pepper because like I said, we like spicy. You can obviously do chili powder, whatever, but. That's my spice of choice. All right, so we already have our Smirnoff. That's our vodka we'll be using today. Um, we have our limes. I've already squeezed half a lime juice for us. And we already have uh, three fourths a cup of whatever your thing is, whether you want to use like a tonic or uh, we are using, you're using seven up today. So, you know, that's how we get down. And then we also have our mint, fresh mint. Um, you can do other things, but you know, something about the leaves is always going to set it off right. So we've already added that, and we're going to go ahead, we're gonna split the difference here, like again said, we're gonna eyeball it. This is our uh, lime squeezed, fresh squeezed. That's how we get down, fresh squeezed. <laughs> Why are you talking like this? I have to, I have Why to. Why are you talking like this? Babe, flaming on me. <laughs> you right. talking all different. We do, we do, we do. Trying to be professional. I'm this trying to be. for fun. I should be like, bada boom. But <laughs> this is for fun. For fun. So, um, Usually it's like two teaspoons or something like that. We're gonna do two capfuls of <laughs> Come simple, <on>. two caps. <laughs> simple syrup. Um, that's gonna give it its sweetness that we need, you know, to bring it all together. So that's one. So one in each or two in each? Two in each, two in each okay. to be specific, yes. Somebody sweet, somebody dry. <laughs> right. You can't be having that. And y'all, if y'all see stuff in the background, you know, like this over here, for instance, like, I mean, we're normal people. This right. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and add. Mm, where's the thing? Yeah, I like to use the mini cup. My wife be on me about using the mini cup. We got a real measuring cup, but I like to use this. Um, we're gonna do mm, about mm, mm. a fourth cup of this Smirnoff vodka. <laughs> Oh, 
And then we're gonna go ahead and add some of this mint. It's All a right. booger. <laughs> It's pretty just good. Kidding. So we're gonna put just a few, you know, however minty you like yours to be. Mm -hmm. Um, I think my wife mentioned it earlier. Uh I didn't put the ice tray in the refrigerator, so we don't have ice. If y'all wondering, they're gonna drink some warm drinks. I didn't even say it was you. Ooh, I'm, I just you know what? Me. But I'm gonna own it. I'm gonna own it. I so didn't say no words, you but know. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and add this mint in there. And obviously there would be ice in there, guys. But this is what's gonna be um the part that brings it all together. Uh, so and it's a competition. Whoever a competition. has the best drink. So when you put the mint in there, it's important also to push it down to the bottom and then start to break it up. Muddle it. That's Muddle how, it. That's how we get um, all the flavors and the mintiness to actually be released into uh, the spite me back. Cocktail. Into the actual cocktail. So we do that. Know. And then we make sure we do it in both of them. Oh, yeah. All right. That looks and smells delicious. All right, mix it up a little bit. I'm gonna add, just go ahead and spin them both, you know? Okay. And then, we wanna go ahead and add, lastly, our limes. As y'all can see, I put a little pre-cut in there. We don't wanna be struggling I'm trying to put them. fancy today. They just be slapped all the side, usually. You know, <laughs> and they be falling off all over the place, but not okay. today. Okay, fancy, fancy, so, fancy. Go ahead and put in there. And then, lastly, guys, the last thing you need to do is Go ahead. All right, you guys, we are back. We are back. We're about to make, we're about to start prepping for the video tacos. Mm -hmm. So, it kind of consists of like multiple steps. And the reason why I'm so happy I have my husband here to help because it's really, really tedious. Yes. So you have to like choose your peppers, de-seed your peppers, you know, cook your pep peppers for a period of time, create your sauce, cook your meats, add your sauce, Fry up some shells, blah, 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 blah. I mean, you guys will see all the things that's happened, but we're really about to just start prepping. <laughs> the peppers we're using are, well, these little bad boys, these are called Arbol. Arbol? Yeah, you can show them. Um, you can find it, where do we find it? We got these at Walmart. Walmart. So, all you Walmart haters, these are at Walmart for sure, for most places. You can also just like get on the Walmart app and see if it's on there. Yep, and then we have this one that I don't know how to pronounce it. We're gonna try our best. Guajilo? <laughs> Guajilo chili peppers. Guajilo. Yep. That's like the larger pepper, like this one. Yep. Now these things add a tremendous amount of kick. Not too much one can't handle, but it's pretty darn good. It's the superstar, honestly, I think, of the dish. But um, yeah, this is where we're at. And when it comes to just de-seeding them, you pop off the top, you squeeze them, and then the seeds they come right out. Now this is the tedious part she's talking about. You don't want to destroy the pepper, but like, y'all probably can't see from all the way over there, but there are seeds coming out, and you have to do that for every single pepper. Um, I'm about to start prepping the carrots. So this may be abnormal to some people. There are many recipes that I watched to figure out what it would look like to create my own, like, video taco recipe, and it's come, I mean, some of you, I watched many YouTubers make video tacos um, as authentically as possible. Um, and I kind of took the things that I liked and that's how I came up with my video taco recipe. So he's gonna be prepping while I'm chatting. But anywho, um, there's this one, there's two when I watched one, it's called Views on the Road, I believe. I love her. Um, she has video everything from the soup to the this. And so I took a lot of her recipe um, as well because we're using the Instant Pot recipe. So I took a lot of that, and so in her recipe particularly, she puts carrots in her, when she cooks the meat in the Instant Pot, she adds in carrots. And y'all, it is so good. Like, it probably sounds really crazy, but this is one of those steps where I'm, I'm, I promise you, don't skip this one, because it makes it so good and so flavorful. It makes it, gives it like this bold taste. And then I also like to add in some of the carrot into the taco, y'all, and it's so good. All right, you guys, so we are using ground chef today. Um, to make our tacos, you can use whatever you want, really. Um, typically, some type of beef, you can use goat, you can use lamb. There's a lot of ways that you can traditionally cook this, but we use ground chuck. Um, so we have like two slabs here. I cannot tell y'all how much meat this is, but it's like this. And then we got like a larger one because we like to have leftovers, that's just us. If you just want to make it for like four people, I feel like this much is enough. All right. 
Babe, what are you grateful for? Since, what are you thankful for since it's Thanksgiving? I am thankful for my wife. Yes, I am. Um, <laughs> I learned a lot from our relationship. Um, I had to grow, you know, and how to ask questions and uh, being curious uh, about my wife, you know, learning from her and just rediscovering who she is every day, you know, that's, I'm grateful for that, I'm grateful for my relationship and the gifts that God has given me, like, uh, my thing is writing, so, I like to write, I am currently working on a project, Beautiful. and we're trying to get it off the ground, so, <laughs> that's all y'all get, that's a little text, but, um, those are the things I'm grateful for, among many other things, but those are the things that kind of come to mind. What about you, love? What am I thankful for? Multiple things. I'm obviously thankful for my husband. Um, there's a lot of growth that happens within our relationship. Um, through marriage, man, we've learned. I don't know if I've learned this much even in the faith <laughs> um, prior to being married. Um, we learned so much. Um, sometimes it's not easy, man. Like life has just been really difficult for me a lot lately. And um, resilience is something I feel like I'm relearning. I always view myself as this like super resilient person, but man, I can't say the way in which God has been challenging me in every aspect of my life has definitely, <laughs> it got the girl together. All right, you guys, so we have a pot here and I have two cups of water. And I'm just gonna add that to the pot. And I'm gonna cut the stove up to This is also to boil your pepper, so I have my peppers here, make sure that you clean them off too. Um, but you're just gonna add them into the water. And you're gonna let them boil for like, I don't know, 10 minutes, basically until they're softened. And you wanna let them like rumble boil, like. Like you want them to boil for real. And if they don't make that sound, you're not doing it right. If you don't make that sound, I don't wanna tell you. You're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. So let me just grab a spoon really quick. Yes. So yeah, here's your pepper. So they're just in water. I'm actually gonna cut this up because I'm not wanting to boil for real, for real. That's just me, but you can take your time with it. But yeah, you're gonna bring these peppers to a boil. You're gonna see the water change color and everything, okay. you guys. So while my peppers are boiling, I have my Instant Pot. I put it on saute because I wanna brown the meat in here. You can obviously brown it on your stove if you like. But it's so much easier if you could just use one thing for your dish. So I thought that'd be super cool. So anywho, I'm just gonna add a little oil, and I already have it heated up here. So you should hear the meat sizzle when it goes in. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my meat. Ooh, that one flew on its own, didn't it? All right. And we're gonna like just brown each side just for a minute or so, you guys. We're gonna try to fit as much into here as we can. It might be a little tight, because we got a pretty decent amount of meat. But, all should work. Okay. So even though all of it doesn't fit right now, basically like half of it fit. So after this is like done browning, I'm gonna take this out and put the rest in there. So we have to swap them out. But that's what you do, you're gonna brown each side take them out and then leave whatever you cook with, whatever is left over in this pot, in your instant pot, do not take it out, cook with it, you're gonna want all of that flavor. So yeah, just make sure you do that. All right, you guys, so I am about to make my version of a piña colada, okay? Piña colada. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. So normally it's with rum, we have vodka. That's okay, because it's still a piña colada anyway. Um, so I have a couple of ingredients here. I have this one ingredient, it's called Cocoa Real. I've actually never used it, but I saw it and I was like, oh, that'd be cool. We got some whipped cream for the types of toppings. We got some pineapple mango. No, it's not pineapple juice. The store didn't have pineapple juice, you guys. We got these ingredients today and it's Thanksgiving, like we said, so. No pineapple juice, our vodka, and I also have some lime juice here. So I'm about to just so freestyle. I'm gonna, I'm gonna measure the alcohol with shot glasses. So I'm gonna say for each of us, a shot and a half. So that's gonna be three total for two people. So that's my alcohol measurement. Oops. This is pretty like decent amount. I'm doing like a lot. Cause how else is it gonna get the cocoa flavor? And I don't even know what the texture of it is gonna be like in a drink, but I don't know, this is like five ounces. A little over five ounces. Just pour that into there. I'm gonna add in some of this pineapple mango juice. 
I don't know. I'm gonna eyeball it. I think that's enough for a drink or two. A little bit more. There we I'm go. I'm gonna be freestyling the recipe. He made y'all a drink that he's made. I don't know, 50 million times. Plus. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would really Low key, I am excited for this pina well, colada. Let's just, uh, splash. Drip, Come on. Drip. Splash. Let's see what happens. Okay, here we go. Here we go, you guys. It's gonna be very loud. Power. Let's just try to half it. It's so milky. Uh oh. <laughs> Remember, guys, we are not professionals. We just out here doing. We're not we're doing. professionals, you guys. Like I said, I do not have enough ice. I was looking for even like the frozen pineapple juice to give it the more icy texture, y'all, but it didn't even have that. So this is our pina colada. We about to tell y'all what it tastes like though, because I feel like it's still gonna be good. It's still gonna be hitting. Don't get it twisted. And we're still gonna top it. We're still going to top it. Y'all hear that meat in the back? It's going. I'm about to take it out. But let me just do this real quick. Oh yeah. Period pose. Look at that. It's about the aesthetic, guys. Look at that. Period. Yeah. That's gooey pose. Ooh. This is actually better than the pina colada. Okay. Nothing like a horchata though, but. Pina colada 2.0. <laughs> it's actually really good. This is what the pepper should look Ooh. like, y'all. They're softened. Look how dark that water is. <clears throat> Again, like I said, I think I could have added a little bit more water, but we can make it work, y'all. I promise. They limp, y'all. They limp. Look at that. Alrighty. Very, very limp, you guys. Hold on, let me just straighten this because there you go. Yep, pop them into the blender. Don't hold it like me. This is a hazard. Right, you guys, so super important ingredients, like I told y'all, our seasoning mix that's going straight into there. Yes, I'm adding mine to my. Little chili pepper mixture. That's just me. You can add it into the meat if you want to. You can do it however you want. This is just how I do my version. So I also use secret ingredient. I can't figure out the YouTuber's name, but there was another YouTuber I watched, and she uses these chipotle peppers in adobo sauce to make hers. And when you want yours like creamy, you want yours a little bit thicker, not the runny, runny kind, and extremely flavorful, and you like a little bit of spice, absolutely add this. To your pepper mixture. I'm putting this straight into the blender, you guys. With all that beautiful sauce, it's so. It's, this is good by itself. It's the bomb. My husband loves it. A uh, quick story, real quick. When I made breakfast burritos, that's my little specialty. When I do breakfast burritos, this chili pepper uh, sauce that she's talking about, this right here. So I use the sauce. As you can see, there are pepper chunks in there as well. It's like chunks of peppers and chunks the of pe adobo sauce. And the adobo sauce itself. So I use the so sauce. Good job. I take the peppers and stuff out and I use the sauce and I pour just a drizzle of that inside of my breakfast burritos just to give them a little higher. You know what I'm saying? So it's pretty good. She did a better one than me. That was pretty good. But um, yeah, so breakfast burritos, that drizzle sweet, just to let you guys know. Anyways, back to our regularly um, scheduled program. <laughs> Minced garlic. Minced garlic. Let me pop some of that. Ooh, this one. Remember I told y'all we chopped up some of those onions into like smaller little bits? So these are the ones I'm gonna pop into here. Okay, some of them flew. We're gonna grab those. Our counters are clean. <laughs> Mind your business. So next. That um, water that we use to cook the peppers in, and it's still some season here. It'll be fine. You can you can strain this if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm just gonna go ahead and pour it into here. Oops, we did our best. All right. All right. So go ahead and put on the top, y'all. Go ahead and blend up all of this goodness. Look at how red that is. So now we have our sauce created, we have our meat brown, we have our ingredients chopped up. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add everything to the dish. So babe, come take a look at the pot. Just show them the inside. You wanna keep all that goodness at the bottom that, that happened when you browned that chuck meat, okay? Keep all of that in there. Do not wash it out, cook with it. It's gonna give you the flavor that you want. So first thing I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add my meat. Meat. This is our browned meat, not fully cooked, obviously just brown the outside. So I'm gonna just add that into here first. That's a pretty decent amount. Look at that. 
Mind you guys, this will get fully cooked in this part of the, part of the process. Absolutely. <laughs> Next, go ahead and add in your carrots that we chopped up earlier. Carrots. I'm telling y'all, that's a game changer. Don't do nothing different. And carrots are bomb, let me then tell you. Then I'm gonna add in the rest of the other half of my onion. Okay. She can really go in just like this. Right, y'all see that? That's basically like all that. She just threw that thing in there. Whole thing. Whole, whole thing. Next, two key ingredients, babies. My Nigerian sisters will understand me. Bay leaves. Bay leaves, you guys. How much bay leaves we put in there, babe? I'm gonna add two. Just two. two. You hear that? Not three, not four. I'm just adding two. two. Powerful, potent. So y'all, yeah, I really don't cook with, only time, other time I ever cook with bay leaves is this dish and then making, um, Making jollof rice. Um, I have a few. I have a pretty decent amount of Nigerian friends, um, so I've had those since <laughs> I've had to make jollof rice. Um, so next, we're just gonna take that good, good sauce that we made. That superstar. Okay, you're gonna dump it into here. So look at my instant pot. If you get, if you look on the inside of your instant pot, there's a line. You do not want to feel anything past that line. So I'm gonna add that in here. And then if anything, I want to make sure that my meat is fully covered. That's super important. So whether you need to add that chick that beef broth, or if you need to add in that water, just make sure your meat is fully covered and do not pass that fill line of two thirds. So I'm gonna go ahead and add mine just directly over everything. I forgot to tell y'all, I added a little bit of sugar um, to the sauce too. That's just one of the ingredients I forgot to tell y'all about. But I did add in some sugar. How much sugar would you say, babe? I don't know, maybe like two tablespoons or something. Two tablespoons, y'all. Like, this is so complicated, you guys. Okay, so it finally locked in a particular position. Saying close it, I gotta twist it this way, so I'm gonna twist it. Then you're gonna go ahead and go to pressure cook. And then you wanna, gonna, you're gonna wanna make sure that you go up to your desired amount of time. I am going to do, do I wanna do 45? Let's go for 50 minutes. Let's just pressure cook 50 minutes. Make sure that the vent is closed. The vent that she's talking about, when we first got this, we didn't know what to do. But this I think right this here, mean closed. Yeah. I think that means closed. You'll know because steam will be shooting out of that bug. <laughs> right, but nothing's clicking right now, so you wanna know. But venting is all the way to the left, and I think close to the right. So make sure that the vent is closed. I have it on a pressure cook. I already put the time on 50. It says on, so it's about to start heating up. And then once it starts pressure cooking, you're gonna see the numbers pop up here. And that's gonna let you know that you're ready to go. If you're having some troubleshooting issues, you can like get on YouTube and see like, why isn't this working? Make sure that the vent is closed because sometimes the time may not start if the vent isn't closed, if the lid isn't on properly. All of those are reasons why your numbers may not pop up. But y'all will see eventually, like when my numbers pop up, y'all see them counting down. And if not, I'll just troubleshoot um, and figure out like what I need to do to get it cooking. But yeah, I went ahead and put it on 50. I don't even know if you need to have it in there that long, but that's just what I'm going for. That's like the average time that I've seen between multiple different people cook their video in the Instant Pot. That's what I'm gonna go with. So, guys, I'm I am making Mexican, authentic Mexican rice, or at least the closest version. This, is, this is what it looks like when it's been when it's been browned for a few minutes. All right, the oil is in there, it's working this magic, moving it around and whatnot. All right, so now that it's browning, you can hear it crackling a little bit, right? <laughs> so we want to go ahead now add our two cups of water. And then when we, once we add that water, we're gonna go ahead and add our cumin, um, some onion, those are optional. You don't have to do that, but we wanna make sure we have some flavor in our rice, right? Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Oh yeah. Now that's the sound you wanna hear. All right. So now, we're gonna go ahead and add our garlic and our paprika. Yummy. Our chili powder, not paprika. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do not put paprika in here. <laughs> we're gonna add that in there, y'all see that? You see how that water just turned brown on it? Then we want to go ahead and add a uh, bouillon. All right. <laughs> Bloop. And then um, we're not going to add the four to eight ounces. That's after the water has um, went ahead and been reduced down, cooked into the rice and everything. Then we will add the four to eight ounces okay. of sauce at that time. So what we're going to do is go ahead and throw this lid on there. 
Um, we're gonna let it stay at this medium heat for about another five to six minutes. Let it bubble a little bit, and then we're gonna turn it out to a lower heat. And then we're gonna cook it with the slit on there so that rice gets nice and fluffy. All right, guys. So now. If you look at this, our water has completely evaporated, it's cooked down, so now it's nice and good in that sauce. It's ridiculous. Um, we're at a simmer now on the stove. We're gonna add that four to eight ounces of tomato sauce. So and we're adding the whole thing? We're adding the whole thing. So full, we're doing a full eight. Yep, a full eight. Okay. Alrighty, and then we're gonna cook that in and let that be at a simmer as well. So we're gonna go ahead and mix that in. It's gonna tie everything all together. Ooh. It's looking good, it's looking bomb. It's looking delicious. You know, we're gonna cover the lid up on this again. It's already on a low heat, so we're good on that. There we go. And that is our authentic Mexican rice. We're gonna put that lid back on the lid. So the meat is done, you guys. I have this knife here. Don't think I'm scary. <laughs> Um, this is the check on the tenderness of the meat. So we have went through our full cycle of 50 minutes. I let I let all the pressure off, so you'll see all the steam come up. You cannot unlock this lid if you have not done that step. So mine is already done. All of it's already come out, so I should be able to just twist our lid and take it off. It smells so good. So let's see. Let's see. You know, let's sign sign juice. Ooh. Y'all see that? She stabbed at it right I away. I can't even pull up a piece of meat for y'all because it's so freaking tender. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. literally falling off. Y'all, I, I literally can't I even get out all that juicy. Lovely. I see that. Juicy, lovely. Take off that bay leaf, though. Get that bay Ooh, leaf. Get that fogged bay leaf. up the camera. Don't let the people get that bay leaf, though. <laughs> Put that to the side. If you find the other one, take that out, too. Look, we found it. <laughs> take the bay leaf out. You don't want people eating on that. But you're gonna get out all that juicy, juicy meat with the carrots, too. Don't leave them behind, I'm telling you. You're gonna take all of that out of your, this is, this base is gonna be the consomme. That's the dipping sauce that you use for the videos. All right, you guys, so I'm literally here just to show y'all how flipping tender this meat is. Like, you just break it up with a fork. You don't even need, like, you literally could do this with your hands, but like I told y'all, this is way too hot for your girl. Look at it, you just take the fork and you're just smashing the meat to kind of break it up because you want to make it easy to go into your tacos. But I mean, literally, like, look at this. Look how juicy this is. Look how delicious that looks. I have it mixed up with the carrots. I'm telling y'all, I would never stir y'all wrong with these okay, carrots. Okay, so we have our yellow corn tortillas. My pan is already hot. I already cooked two of the tacos. You know, I had to... <laughs> Get myself right before I came back on camera. And I'm gonna take one of these yellow corns. Let me set this down. I'm gonna slide over here. We're gonna dip. We're gonna dip her back and forth just you know two times, once each side. I'm very ghetto, so I'm bringing my pan over. I'm gonna slap her in there. Okay, we're gonna do it again. Grab another one. I cook two at a time. That's just me. Um, because we be hungry and lazy, so we gonna dip it again. One side, another side. Yes, I'm using my bare hands. I am getting my black grandmother cooking skills on point, so duh, I'm using All my right. hands. <laughs> so I can see in the pan they're a little overlapped, so I'm gonna just kind of spread them out so they can both cook um, on each side, kind of individually and fairly, so that they're touching. But you see, they coat it. You don't have, don't let them linger in the sauce too long, because you don't want to get your tortilla shells too soggy because we want to get them cooked up we want to get them crunchy we want to bite into those video tacos and have that little um, so i let them cook on one side for however long i flip them over and then i stuff them i stuff them with my meat and i stuff them with a meltable cheese you guys so i'm using quesadilla cheese not what i prefer what is it you prefer babe there's a cheese it's called like and i'm gonna say this wrong but to me it's pronounced hojaca yep a whole hock of cheese, and I think it starts with the O. So you just add the cheese on top of your meat, like so, like that. Yes, some will get in the pan because why? We're human. Ooh. So it's gonna get in there a little bit, you guys. But and that's right. We're gonna, gonna, we gonna eat it all the same, though. <laughs> exactly. So I just put it on one side of the shell, y'all. So that's easier for me to like fold them and flip them and get them cooking on both sides when it's time. Would you say that's a generous amount of cheese? I say that's a pretty generous amount of cheese. 
you know, everybody know that cheese tolerance level before their stomach gets bubbling. If yours is less, do less. If you got all the tolerance in the world, do more. Do what you please. Right, so guys, we're gonna go ahead and make some black beans to go in the grill. Simple. Uh, we're gonna black put beans for a black man. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> she wild. <laughs> um, we got our heat on a medium heat. Medium heat seems to be the, the thing for everything, right? Uh, a medium it's heat. It's safe. We're gonna go ahead and put some oil in there. We need a small oil hole. into the small pot because we're not making a bunch. Right. Um, so go ahead, wash, strain your beans. I've already done that at this time. Um, we're gonna go ahead. I'm just grabbing the first utensil I see. Okay, okay. <laughs> and then we're gonna go ahead and put those in there. Oh yeah. And we want to make sure when we wash and strain it, we want all the sauce that comes in that can, all that salt and everything that they use to preserve it. We want all that to get washed off. Mm -hmm. So we want to go ahead and throw that in there. So went ahead, we, we diced up some onion. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add that in there. And then just for some flavor, optional again, a little bit of cumin. Uh, we're gonna use this generously. Generously is different for everybody. We're gonna go ahead and mm -hmm. get that going. All right, we don't want to overdo it. Ooh. And then we want to go ahead and just make sure we mix it up a little bit. Five to eight minutes, I say, just let it warm up, get cooked in there real nice and As good. you know, salt is a flavor enhancer. We want to oh, go yeah. ahead and throw that in there, not overdo it. Boom, oh, boom, yeah. boom. And then a little bit of pepper, we're going to get that. Pack that on up in there. And again, guys, we want to mix it up. Make sure we get all the flavors in there. Again, five to eight minutes. Just want to heat it up. Make sure it's nice and cooked through onions in there. And then you got you some black right, beans. So I'm putting together a consomme. So basically, you're going to just kind of fill up your dish. This is what you're going to be dipping your yummy, yummy tacos into. Not super, super full because we're going to add some things, but about this much. I'm going to pop them into the microwave really, really quick just because I haven't had my instant pot sitting on um, warm. So I'll throw them in the microwave and then put the rest together. All right, you guys. So when your tacos are done, dish out your consomme into different dishes. And then you're gonna add a couple of things. So I like to add some of that meat. Yes, I'm using my hands. I just add some of that right to the center here. I do that in both of them. And this is for any guests. Like you get them a little extra meat, okay? Because when they scoop up that meat, they're gonna be so grateful for you, all right? Grab you a bit of onion, pop that in the center. Same for the other dish. Pop some of that onion there right in the center of the dish. And then you're gonna go in with some chopped up cilantro. Cilantro! <laughs> chopped up cilantro, you guys. And just pop that in and that's beautiful. That is our consult. All right, guys, so we're completely done at this point. All done. All done, all done. It was a great experience. It was super great. Yummy. Look at these taco dogs. Right, the sauce. Oh! Oh! The sauce. Good luck, how fun. You know, I really gotta give shout outs to people who do this on a regular because this took hours. As y'all can see, it really, literally went from day to night because we were like recording. You're eating a little bit here and there. We're moving around. We're doing stuff. But this was super, super fun. Let us know down in the comments if y'all want to see more cooking with the office segments. We'll make whatever y'all like to make up because your girl can cook. Right. You hear me? Your girl can cook. And your boy can learn. <laughs> He's a good learner. He's gonna follow the recipe. He also can cook. Yes. Sir. Maybe not like a from scratch type of person, but he can follow a recipe <laughs> to, to yeah. the point. You know. So anywho, I hope that you guys try this dish. If y'all do, please let me know down in the comments. Like this video, share it, subscribe if you haven't, because I know some of y'all watching this video are not subscribed to my channel, but we had so much fun doing this. What you think, babe? Oh yeah, it was super good. We like ready to eat. We are ready to eat. <laughs> wow, like I don't know how people do this. My responses are short because I'm but ready. This was, this was very, very fun. Thank you guys so much for joining my channel again. Love y'all. See y'all next time. Peace.